Namaste. Myself, Dr. Samia Pungranawar. I'm a chief consultant at Diabetes Tribal Health Clinic. Thank you. And we're here today to discuss on a topic, how to understand diabetes communications. So many patients are wondering, like, which are not the uh, diabetes symptoms and how do I get to know that I'm going towards the communication? So let's talk about the computations. I have covered up about the diabetes and the symptoms and diabetes according to Ayurveda, diabetes according to modern science, and diabetes presentation in the form of symptoms, diabetes presentation uh, along with the sugar levels or the diagnostics required for the uh, to identify or to diagnose the diabetes and to manage. Everything is being uh, covered up in many other videos. So uh, I'll be very specific with this, understanding diabetes complications. So uh, what are diabetes complications? We had few classical complications which we used to say that was only about the renal complication, that is uh, where your kidney starts involving, or retinopathy, diabetic retinopathy, where your eye gets uh, involved, right? and diabetic neuropathy. Other than that, there was like diabetic ulcers, which were also uh, quite complications, which were leading to amputations. That was quite uh, cases which we used to see in uh, India. Uh, that is maybe because of uh, undiagnosed diabetes or unattended, uh, uncontrolled diabetes, which was leading to uh, uh, any kind of uh, ulcers or uh, Curved in the legs and all, they have, there are many cases which has gone for the amputation. So uh, let us start, other than this classical symptoms, I mean classical uh, major divided diabetic complications, nowadays we are able to see there are many other complication symptoms which a patient is starting from the first year of his diabetes uh, journey. Let's say uh, the patient has diagnosed with the diabetes in a uh, maybe past one to five years, and they are already started with a computation. A decade ago, we used to get the patients. They used to uh, get into complications maybe at least after 10 to 15 years of their diabetes life. But what we are seeing nowadays is within five years of their diabetes lives and the management of diabetes, in spite of having a good control of that blood sugar, we are uh, getting the patient who is ending up with a diabetic complications. So uh, let's talk about diabetic complication symptoms. So majorly, uh, there are a few common symptoms to understand, uh, which is what the diabetes has and uh, the complications also pass the symptom. Like, uh, let's see, many people who are diagnosed with the uh, diabetes, they also start with a kind of an you know, eye strain. That was the first symptom to start with, and uh, it will be always missed symptom because most of the people, at least eighty percent, including the doctors, the operator, everyone, we use the laptops or the gadgets for a long time, and we are very much dependent on our gadgets. So our eyes are be exposed to that and a kind of a spray from morning to evening. So what they feel is the stress is because of the uh, exposure to the gadgets. But yeah. That is a one of the symptoms uh, majorly we see in our complications of diabetic retinopathy. That's a blurred vision. And also people start, it, they walk immediately start with a blurred vision. But yeah, they, they uh, start appreciating kind of a heaviness or freaking pain inside the eyes. And then the later they feel like the, uh, the blurredness is not continuous but on and off. So that is the time we have to understand you are going towards the complications. So that could be there is a possibility even though your blood sugar could show you normal but you are already having the complication symptoms. I mean your body has started exhibiting the complication symptoms and uh, they could be another next one I would say the major symptom is or uh, neuropathy like numbness but they generally start with the burning palms or the burning soles uh, and the numbness is like the, if at all, if they just uh, sleep on one side or if they just rest on their hand, then also within the five minutes to ten minutes, they can start feeling there is no circulation. I mean, it's completely numb. So that is also complication symptoms where you're going towards the neuropathy. 
But uh, most of the diabetic patients with that year, they start developing the burning uh, soul of the palms. And the, yes, the, there is a one more like weight loss and a big gain. See, most of the time we say is weight gain is due to, uh, they are also a patient of thyroid. Then you can see that. And I, it works towards more for the females as far as we have seen. That is, they are already diabetic and they are also suffering from a thyroid. Then they have this particular weight uh, loss as well as the uh, uncontrolled sugar level. That is also a concern you are going towards a population. And then our people always like, you know, only uh, with the diabetes, then we see uh, the weight loss is also a drastic weight loss. It is, uh, that, that is also a symptom of a diabetes and sometimes you when you diagnosed with the diabetes you have lost weight and then once you should even have thumb under control you have gained back the weight and you're really good and all of a sudden within like a uh, drastic in between this in that year of two you suddenly started losing the weight again even though your sugar levels are normal well that is a concern you have to understand your weight towards the complications the one more uh, very much important complication of diabetes is your related to your kidney. As I was already telling about that renal disease. So we generally the doctors, the patients who are already suffering from diabetes, we ask them to screen for the uh, particular test. We also ask them to get that uh, creatinine chant at least six months once. And if we don't, if they start complaining any kind of a puffiness uh, on their eyelids or if they have any kind of a leg swelling and if they also uh, complain, see whether well, the liver seems to be normal, but they keep uh, going to the urination sequence, it has increased or the uh, mouth dryness. That is always a concern. So we see that uh, dry mouth uh, in most of the insulin dependent, I mean the type 2, but they are already on insulin. So those patients also we see because uh, the people who are at insulin, uh, we won't be able to see it. Their uh, insulin metabolism would be like very throughout the day. So depending on that, that's what their doctors will ask you to, you know, adjust the insulin doses. Morning is the if you feel really high your nearest and then you uh, decrease the immune doses. So that could be happening, but if that happens for a long duration, I mean, the fluctuation of that happens for a long duration, then that is also a concern. Because generally the renal uh, failure, which would go up to a dialysis or a kidney failure, what we see. And uh, there is a transplantation possibility, but that's always a, I know, a risk and the chances of survival won't be uh, comparatively low. And uh, there is a one more condition we call it as also an adulting key, uh, ketoacinosis. That is also a Kind like, you know, there is a sugar level that shoots up a lot in your blood all of a sudden. I mean, it is we managed to maintain for years to get up, but all of a sudden what happens? It starts shooting up. Then that is also like your uh, we arrive uh, what we say, the kidney that has already gone. It is no more able to filter whatever at the food or the water and, and giving your medicines. Then that is a stage we call it as ketoacidosis. That is also the end it would be like, you know, leading to your uh, renal phase. So you have to be always very grateful to understand or observe your body, whether or am I going to work the complication. So, uh, generally there was a time we used to say that if you have an uncontrolled sugar levels, then only you would end up with the complications. But whatever we are seeing, the, uh, the research, the people who even has a, a lot of technology assistance, so their sugar level, I can say at least 60 to uh, 65 percent of the patients and diabetic patients are able to manage their sugar levels at their normal rate, but still that uh, the population rates, I mean, diabetic complication patients have not reduced uh, as such. They are still interesting. There are people was really undergoing with the pedosclosis or renal failure or retinopathy, especially the diabetic neuropathy. Diabetic neuropathy has become quite form and it is like it has become, it is becoming that that falsification is becoming the regular symptom in the patients, I would say. The patients who are starting the first year of diabetes are also suffering from the same complications with the 
a person who have uh, been a uh, diabetic for uh, more than 10 to 15 years. So the both are having the same neuropathy complaints. So uh, why the complications are becoming really a uh, uh, kind of a uh, theory nowadays for the diabetic patients is uh, the first thing what you do is you always go for an acute uh, solution. I would say like, uh, uh, immediate uh, instant solution kind. Because they get that sugar thermal under control with the blood. Very uh, types of diet is what I'm seeing with the patients. They see like uh, uh, before they come to us, we, I, I meet them. Uh, most of the patients, at least 50 to 60 percent of the patient tell us me. Now, to my weight was really a lower weight of us, well, obese, but I put, I followed the keto diet or intermittent fasting, all those uh, a particular diet and sugar, they get it online without any proper uh, guidelines. They just go with that and they lose particular weight and they come to us by saying, Dr. after losing so and so weight, my sugar levels have come under control, but I have started with the burning sword or a numbness or the kind of a uh, burning uh, pounds and uh, I, we also start getting the sensation of any warm the weights on the legs so uh, whenever they're sleeping. That, that's also something related to your neuropathy. The uh, nervous, nerves up here to your legs has been uh, damaged. So they say that this allowing started in spite I uh, took my shibli events under control. So that is where you have to be very conscious. How did you put that under control? Did you do any so aggressive or uh, dieting or aggressive exercises and it has come out? That doesn't mean your body has got a time to heal or process that body with a uh, particular uh, program or uh, the stress you underwent. I mean, it's not only the mental stress, it's your body underwent. For example, I'm a person who eats uh, rice twice a day and uh, I suddenly stop complete rice intake. So where do, how does my body understand that there, there are orphans in my body, like maybe the including your thyroid or your uh, liver enzymes, bile juice. These are all the particular organs which releases particular hormones and the particular enzymes to take care of your metabolism. And whatever it was releasing to uh, digest that particular rice for the day, it, it is no more necessary. So what does they have to How do uh, the other organs of your body adopt your new lifestyle or the new diet or whatever the aggressive uh, step you have taken just to control your sugar levels. So whatever you start, it should be slow. And you should also understand that you are a body, individual body, separately, and then you have to try to work on it. It is not something that you, you just overnight you decide you uh, sprawl through some articles and then suddenly you start adopting it, then yes, you will have all the chances to end up with the connotations. And uh, I, I'd have to uh, mention about this, uh, why am I uh, asking the people to understand the publication is, I think I'm always saying, you don't understand the publication, you would be a doctor every, or you would be a lab, or maybe uh, yourself, for the soul and nowadays, there is no restrictions to get your uh, lab test done. So you would just get your blood test down maybe monthly once or two months once, three months once, and you look at the reports and you feel it's the normal. Then also you will start ignoring the symptoms. Because when I ask them, when did you start with your uh, burning sensation, they might give you a history of at least a year back. At least six, to, six months to a year back, they have already started with a particular burning sensation, but uh, they never looked into it because they said my sugar levels were pretty normal, so I was never uh, concerned about it. So if you can't be taking the chance like that, uh, instead I would say you have to manage. And so if you ask me, like, Doctor, how do I uh, understand this particular complications, or how can I prevent myself from the complication? So that is a, I guess you know, understand the complication, you won't be able to prevent the particular complication. See, first of all, understanding diabetes itself is a huge task. Uh, because when the first question I uh, talk to my patients is I always ask that, what have you understood? That could be a fresh or like the one one diagnosed yesterday or one who diagnosed 15, 20 years back. The first question I ask them is, what have you understood about diabetes? See, the diabetes is a uh, lifespan disease and I have to keep taking the medicines, then it's all good.
So th this is the answer, at least I hear from some deep person of my patients. Uh, because there are two reasons. One is like the parents or somebody at Fabi always had that, and they have always given this uh, suggestion to them uh, when it would be born diagnosed. Or the second thing is the 20 years life I've already spent with the same way, like taking those particular tablets. I've been leading my life. So it is a, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a genuine answer or right. Let's see that that's an acceptable uh, answer whenever a patient tells me. We had to understand why didn't you develop the diabetes at the first thing? Because like, why did you develop? It's not always a hereditary week. There are many patients that is a induced to diabetes. And especially post common like post COVID, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, they see it, that they got diagnosed after uh, uh, having an uh, admission in the hospital and they were put on a particular high steroids. Post to that, uh, within a year or within six months, they started feeling the uh, diabetic symptoms or without symptoms. Also, they were just uh, craving fat and stickups, as I was said in my other uh, videos. So that's that's been a little friendly. Every three months or six months or you only now uh, everybody undergo a uh, uh, blood test or a uh, medical uh, general uh, checkup, and they got their diagnosed. But the history will always tell me that they had a kind of a uh, uh, COVID and they were admitted with the episode of a uh, high steroids. Yes, that is copy news to that. So you should um, just even get an exam. And so make that every person who got diagnosed with diabetes will always have a positive factor. One among them could be a heritage. I won't say that, but I won't say that. Healthy person would contribute, but there are all other positive factors which you have to uh, really understand why did it come. And on our fixed answer lies in your history. Uh, just I'm trying to understand. And never try to completely once you understand that, for example, a person who is not in all sleep in the nights or who really uh, won't eat food on time, or he's the person who like keeps having the outside food. I mean, there is no proteins, there's no fruits or uh, vegetables. See, when I say outside food, um, it at the beam depends. For me in India, there is a variety so of uh, food available in the markets, like the uh, standards, uh, food standards varies. The, sh the particular uh, food you bought, that depends on that. But if you uh, let's go to uh, developed countries, they are also good with diabetes and their diabetic complications. Uh, I mean, in fact, I would say they are getting more into complications compared to India. So what, what are their food standards? They eat most of the time outside. The lunch or uh, the dinner would be most all the time outside. And they have a good food standards. That's why they are okay to eat outside because they have a, a, a standardized uh, food, which is, I mean, the quality food served at most of the other restaurants. So still, why did they uh, develop? And they want things. It's not only the outside food I'm paying. It's also, you have to understand, that particular photo of the that particular high protein, what you have given to your body, that should be metabolized. So you might have a problem with a bad voice, or you might have a problem with a particular hormones in your body, which you regard it. Because of this sleepless nights, or maybe a stressful or career, or maybe a particular trauma you underwent. But you have to understand when you go do something to your body, your body will always have a capability to keep. But that healing time would vary from an individual to another individual. That is where the fabrication can settled. Because some people, everybody doesn't get into diabetic complication. But whenever they get into diabetic complication, some would have bought into complication within five years. Some would have bought into complication within 10 years, 20 years. And there are people who would never get into the complication. They were, uh, you know, financial lifespan being just paid the diabetic with the a good lifestyle. So, if you do it, if you want to avoid complication, first, I, I will tell you step by step. The first thing is, you should know, or, I mean, you have to observe your body, not only with the sugar in the breast, but now with the sedatives. And you should never, ever hurry or pressurize yourself to push into any oppressive steps. That could be diet, exercise, meditation, any sustained medication. If the blood is shifting, goes, you should be clear for that. Are you being aggressive or it is a slow process? And the third thing is, you it is not wrong to screen yourself with the any blood test reports. It's always good, but you should know how and when. 
and being that yes, you don't have a symptoms, just all keep repeating your uh, creatinine or any other uh, test every three months, no, not necessary. If dot if you had anything which is cut, then you repeat it. Then you get it tested every six months. Or I would say, clearly, one screen is more than enough. Is it all if you're not a cardiac patient or you're not already, I mean, if you're only a diabetic patient. If you have any other related issues, like you have a uh, blood pressure or you have a, a thyroid and you're already on a blood thinners or you also have a high cholesterol, the blood pressure is a concern, then you might need every six months of screening with your blood test reports. But it's not only on the blood test reports, it's all based a concern with your body, stress one, observation, symptomatic presentation. So if the tell if you know these steps, then you would be able to get you out of the complication or you will also understand or you will never get into complications. The one more the important complication and the stop is the uh, food sold. Like uh, when you, you get a cut or uh, maybe when you are cooking or something happens on your hand to Always do check for your needing time. If it all if it is not stopping, so for some people it goes up to two minutes, but it stops. But you should always be careful about it. Like you have to compare before how much was your bleeding time. That you can also get done in three months once that you will understand. Uh that was also on uh, one of the observations you have to understand. And when the war you get any and make sure like when exactly in winter is the, you're very prone to get hit by any kind of conley infection or any small source, or if you're a person who is a dog, uh, the one who works uh, in and around the water or on watch chill, or if you stay in a foid uh, region, then you have to be very careful about the foot ulcers. And if you get any small answer, or if it is not a bond, recovering within a week, and along with the treatment, I mean, with the particular drug, uh, any kind of antibiotics, then it's a concern. Immediately, you have to get yourself tested because then you can avoid your amputation. So because we have seen like, uh, they have just started with the one more that be the big two and that complete half a leg is being amputated. And that's a lot. And then, yes, diabetic of uh, uh, foot are like, uh, sometimes they feel this week it's healing, but the next week the infection has spread up to the uh, your waist or the muscles. So that, that's like very uh, unpredictable. You could get to interpretation at any moment. And the, they have to know with amputation because they have to save your lives. Then you have to let go a part of your body. So uh, this is how I, it's all about the understanding the diabetic complications. So diabetes has always been a disease which you can live with. And it, it's not a scary disease. And it is the water rich people's disease. So diabetes is a metabolic disease. It's a lifestyle disease. And it is also a stress induced. Nowadays, what I get is one of the other patients will always have a trauma and a history of a five years stress what they have undergone. Post to that, they have started with the diabetes or they have directly started with the diabetic complications. But if you are a person, not to get a like kind of restless or worry once you're diabetic so you have to end up with the complication there is nothing mandatory you have to end up with the complication there is always a solution is it all if you look how to take care of your three things which will eat the food appetite hunger that's the first thing you should know how to eat on time second thing is your motion should be always clear so you should have it like properly if you have a, your ball movement should be very clear the third thing is your sleeping habits. So what time you sleep, what time will get out? It's not, uh, don't tell me like, the I sleep six to eight hours. I want to ask you the six to eight hours. My always answer is, if I to sleep between 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. That is what is an ideal time for to give a rest for your brain as usual. So if you're able to follow these three things, you being a diabetic, still eat, you can avoid your palpitations and if not eat, don't go for on any addressing immediate decisions on your diet, food or exercises or the medications. And never stop any of the ongoing medications just because you started the particular diet and you started using some pills or you started uh, feeling better or your sugar levels have come well. So you will just stop your medications. Don't stop at anything without any proper guidance of any doctor, any system of doctor who has a complete medical knowledge. You have to, with the day, uh, 
and the days of our months or under the bed guidance then yes then definitely you can stop or uh, avoid the diabetic cognitions so this is all about understanding diabetic cognitions uh let's see there are many other videos which i'm trying to cover on the diabetes related questions and i'll also be attending few uh, frequently asked questions from my patients thank you